Welcome everybody to this webinar called Knowledge Pills for Phrenic ERG Series, Fuji Electric's Compact PWM Converter Solution. What are we trying to uh, explain to you during this webinar? Well, first of all, um, when we are controlling an electric motor, uh, it may happen that the motor regenerates and, and we want to study what to do with, uh, with this energy and when this uh, happens. Then as well, we want to learn what are current harmonics um, generated when we use an inverter. And finally, um, we want to understand why to use phrenic ERG series, which are the advantages, some tips, and external components we have to use with this uh, product. So let's study a standard uh, case when we use a, a standard inverter. Here you have um, what could be a standard inverter that is a, a unit, a device, which includes a direct rectifier, which includes a DC link with capacitors, a braking circuit, the IGBTs module, which modulates the PWM signal, which controls an electric motor. And on this device, um, this, this system, we may have, as you see here, a line reactor or a DC reactor connected on, on series with the DC link. Okay. So um, let's study two characteristic, characteristics of, of this system. First one is um, when we are driving the motor at the rated power. Of course, uh, we have a consumption from the motor, which is uh, 100 by the inverter. And this, this uh, energy current voltage is taken from the mains, OK? Due to the characteristics of, of, the, of, this, of this device, because of the direct rectifier and its uh, capacitors, we have a distortion on the voltage and on the current. Okay, you have the, on the left side of the, of the, of the image, you have um, a graphic showing how the signals of voltage and current may look like in this kind of configuration. Okay, the, the distortion on the current can be uh, decomposed in uh, different harmonics. As a higher are the number of harmonics and higher is the, the amount of harmonics and, and, and the level of the harmonics, more suffers the mains. Uh, this means that it has stress, it has loses, and this is something uh, which doesn't like to the electricity suppliers. And this is why we have uh, different European um, directive and, and standards which uh, regulates this, okay? Um, when we use this kind of solution with a standard inverter and with a line reactor or, or DC reactor, let's say we can have around, um, when we speak about harmonic distortion, THDI in the current, around 40%, okay? Second phenomenon we have is when motor is uh, regenerating or when it's breaking the load. Um, this is a classical case is when we have an overhead crane, for example, and this overhead crane is moving a heavy load and this load is, is going down. Yeah, because of the gravity, the load tries to go fast down, but we have the inverter controlling the motor trying to generate a specific speed profile. In this condition, motor is regenerating energy. And this uh, energy has to go somewhere. You know? um, in this kind of configuration, the inverter, uh, the, the motor increases the voltage on the capacitors, and this uh, regenerated energy is burned in a braking resistor. Uh, the, the advantage of, of this solution is that, uh, yeah, of course, uh, we are. Uh, not using this energy, uh, it's it's burned uh, as a as a heat in in the environment, and depending on on the load we have to break, of course the the breaking resistors uh, are big and, and take space. Okay, and at this point is uh, where we have in the game the Phrenic ERG series. Uh, thanks to the DC voltage control and the AC current control with Phrenic ERG series, we can manage the motor energy, which means uh, when motor is, is driving, the, the ERG will supply the needed energy to the motor. And when the motor is braking, 
the ERH will handle this uh, energy and it, it will return it into the mains. And um, thanks to the current control, we can generate uh, almost perfect sinusoidal, sinusoidal wave on the input, which makes the uh, harmonic distortion, which makes the, the current harmonics very low. We speak about the uh, THGI below 5%. So after this inter introduction, I would like you to participate just to, to break the ice a bit. I want to do a poll. Okay, now you will see a question in your in your screens. Please vote. We have a question. Can I use ERHE in a winding generator with a synchronous motor in open loop? The answer, of course, is, is yes, uh, for these three reasons. First one, um, forgot uh, before I forgot to mention, but uh, the control mode and the kind of motor we have uh, is not uh, important or related to the RHG. It is related to the inverter. So let's say ERHG can work in any kind of application. Yeah. So in case of synchronous motor in open loop, first we need to know if we have an inverter able to control this kind of, of motor in this kind of configuration. And of course, Fuji Electric has this kind of, of inverters. Okay. So yes, we, we can. Second, we have a wind generator, which of course means that it's going to generate energy or regenerate energy. It's going to be in a somehow constant breaking energy. So it makes sense to uh, to not burn, of course, this energy in, into the breaking resistor because it's a waste. And we want to return this energy into the mains. And as we are going to have uh, almost perfect sinusoidal wave, we are going to generate a clean energy. We are going to place into the mains the proper sine wave. OK? So now let's um, learn about ERG. OK? In case of uh, ERG, we have two voltage. Um, options we have uh, three phases 200 volts and three phases 400 volts in case of 200 volts we have a power range from 5.5 to 22 kilowatts and with 400 volts we have a power range from 5.5 up to 70 to 75 kilowatts as you see here the type code yeah, rhe 22 means the, the the power yeah then dash two or four, depending on the power supply. And then in Europe, we are going to have the European specific specification. This means RHE 22C-2EE, for example. Okay. How to size this, this product? Um, well, we size this product by, by power. And you have two options. You can, you can um, size it by continuous power. The, the power specified on the type code is a continuous rating power. So for example, a unit of 5.5 kilowatts is able to um, supply, uh, regenerate, sorry, 5.5 uh, kilowatts continuously. And then we have a maximum uh, overload of 150% during one minute. Uh, this means, for example, that a unit of ERHE 37 kilowatts is able to to regenerate during one minute, 55 kilowatts. Yeah, it is as well important for, for well, it's interesting to know this characteristic for, of course, for overloads, but as well for, for uh, stopping the load in short time. Yeah. Okay. So um, we have some questions in the chat already, I see, but uh, please, in this case, let me answer uh, the question in the end of, of the webinar. OK, THDI, THDI, well, as mentioned before, um, total harmonic distortion, when we use a PWM converter, ERHG, it goes below 5%. OK, this is thanks to uh, controlling the IGBTs uh, on the ERHG, we can generate uh, almost perfect sinusoidal wave as you see in this image on the, on the right side. On the left side, we have the sinus uh, current waveform when we have a standard inverter without uh, reactor. 
and in the graphic, you have um, the harmonic level or the harmonic um, yeah percentage for each uh, harmonic when we use PWM converter, sorry, without reactors or using reactors. Okay, so working modes, yeah. Um, this product has two working modes. One is is a standard one. The second one is the is a, a new mode yeah, that we have in in Fuji Electric. So mode one, mode one is the classical um, working mode of an active front end, and basically, well, it, it's my expression until this moment was focused to 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 explain how a, how a active front end or how a converter works. So this means that uh, in this example, we have a lift application. So it's a system that sometimes uh, is, the motor is driving, uh, so taking energy from the mains, and sometimes uh, the motor is breaking energy, so regenerating some energy. Yeah, in this case, we have uh, the ERHC and its external components in series with uh, with the inverter. So the ERHC supplies by means of the DC link the inverter. And the ERG is the one in charge of managing the energy. So taking energy from the mains or returning energy to the mains, depending on the on the work of the motor. Okay. So in this case, um, we size the converter by the inverter or the motor capacity. So basic example, if motor is 10 kilowatts, my inverter will be 10 kilowatts as well. And ERG is going to be 10 kilowatts as well. Um, here you, we have a basic wiring of, of this system and all the components which are going to be involved on it. Okay, so starting from the left side, we have the mains, three phase mains, of course. Then we have a main contactor, main contactor, or this can be a main switch or, or any, any, any device that you may think to cut or to supply your cabinet. Then at the beginning of the system, we always have the input EMC filter, okay, that we need to clean from electric noise, to isolate from electric noise our system to the other ones, okay, and of course this is uh, following European European standards. And then we have um, two branches, okay, the main branch. Uh, which is supplying the ERHC. In, in here, we have the harmonic filter, boosting reactor, the charging resistor, charging contactor, and fuses. Okay, afterwards, I'm going to explain a bit more about um, the, um, why we install those components and which is the, the purpose of these components. Okay, then we have the ERHC, and, and then we have the, the lower line, which is the, the sensing. Okay, um, one of the, the works which have the ERHC is first to sense uh, in which uh, conditions we have the, the main supply, in which order we have the, the phases. So when we regenerate, we do it on the right sequence and on the right phase, okay? Then as explained before, um, through the DC link, through the plus and minus uh, terminals, we supply the inverter. And of course the inverter is connected into the motor. Uh, two additional explanations. On the, on the charging circuit, we have the contactor 73. This contactor 73 is controlled by the ERHC because the ERHC um, monitors the status of the DC link. And when the DC link is, is charged and uh, from a certain level, then we can bypass the charging resistor and supply directly the ERHC from the mains. And here we have the first tip, yeah. Um, ERHC is a device that, of course, we have to give run command to start it, okay? In systems like, for example, lift, that all, uh, not all the time the, the, the system is working or, or cranes, for example, we don't have to have the ERHC always in, in run yeah? because we, we don't need to have the ERHC always synchronized with the mains because if the motor is stopped, it's not going to be consumption with region region energy, okay? So our suggestion is always to link the enable on the inverter to the run command on the ERHC. So when the inverter receives the enable command, means that uh, the inverter is getting ready to be used. 
ERHC uh, will, will do so. Okay. And now we go to explain mode two, which is a, a new mode in, a, in a, the converters family of Fuji Electric. And uh, we called mode two as well, electronic braking resistor. Okay, the, the concept here is that the uh, ERHC is working in parallel with, with the inverter and it's going to work only to uh, regen energy when the motor is braking. Okay, so how to size here? Uh, we size here the ERHC by the braking power. So we choose the, the, the size of the ERHC according to the braking power we calculate the motor is going to to break in this case we have the thgi below five percent only during braking because the uh, erh is going to work only in this in this period this function is activated by a parameter uh, parameter f12 equal to this uh, software function is limited uh, to um, this specific range so from 5.5 kilowatts up to 18.5 kilowatts in this case, um, we increase the switching frequency uh, that uh, is used to generate the sinusoidal wave, sinusoidal wave here. So up to 16 kilohertz. This makes a uh, low noise during region and this is especially appreciated in lift applications. And uh, the way of sizing this device is going to be by 50% uh, with 50% ED because we understand 50% of, of the time motor is driving 50% of the time um, ERHC is going to be breaking. Okay. So uh, wiring. Okay. Some additional information about wiring. Again, here we have a mains, a three phase mains with a main contact or a main switch. Yeah. Again, here we have a input EMC filter, which is supplying the complete system. Okay. So we have a specific uh, EMC filters for this kind of application. And from the input EMC filter, we supply in one line the inverter and in the other line the ERHC. Okay. Um, you see that in front of the inverter, we have a line reactor, ACRE in this case, in order to avoid that the region energy uh, is, is, is consumed by the inverter because we want this energy to go to the mains. Okay. And then on the ERHC line, um, again, well, we have the uh, harmonic filter boosting reactor, charging circuit and fuses, and the sensing channels. Okay. Important point to keep in mind in this configuration. So we have this line here, which is in line with the motor. Uh, so in this line, we have inverter, we have line reactor, and we have input EMC filter. All these three devices has to be sized according to the motor power. Okay. And then we have the devices below, which are the ones which are going to work only during braking. Those devices, this means ERHC, fuses, uh, charging circuit, harmonic filtering, boosting reactor, are going to be sized according to the braking power. Okay. So here, keep in mind, we will size the components into ways, the ones using during motoring mode, so sized for the motor power, and the ones use, using used during a braking mode, so sized for the braking power. How how the, the ERHC works in, in this mode? Okay, so in, in this mode, the ERHC is monitoring the, the voltage on the DC link. So in this graphic here, um, this will, would be the case where the ER, uh, ERHC and the inverter are, are supplied and the motor is, is not it's not uh, running or the motor is, is running as a motor. So the voltage level is more or less around this level. And when the motor uh, starts to break, of course, the voltage is link will start to increase. And when we reach a certain level, then the ERHC starts to work. Here you see, yeah, it starts to work. And from this point, the ERHC will start to switch the IGBTs in order to regen energy in order to uh, generate the sinusoidal wave. When the voltage DC link reduces, uh, goes below this level, then it stops. Okay, so the level from its uh, from the starting and stopping is defined by the parameters F13 and F17. Okay, and then we have two working modes um, with a 
u05 parameter 0 or 1. Um, I'm, I'm going to uh, say into the ERHG if it starts by a fixed um, voltage level, which is uh, which is this one in case of 100 volts or this one in case of 200 volts, or uh, with a variable mode, uh, variable voltage. This means that the ERHG is going to uh, work in these voltage the ceiling levels. Okay. Uh, one tip about mode two. Okay, uh, we can combine this um, this mode with the power limit function on the on the inverters. And as you probably know, we have um, Fresnik VG or Fresnik Mega, which have the functions to limit the power. And we can even choose if we limit the power during braking or during driving. Okay, so we if we, we use this function combined with the ERHG mode two, we can. Um, specify the, the uh, power limit linked to the power of the ERHG. This means that um, we can specify which is the maximum amount of, uh, of uh, breaking power I'm going to have. I can, I can limit this and this um, by means of this I can specify or I can limit the, the ERHG I'm going to use. Okay. So uh, let, let's see by this by, by a basic example, which is always uh, easier to, to understand. Uh, so for example, we have a RHC 18.5C dash 4EE, uh, which is um, a device that considering the overload during 16 seconds is able to break 27 kilowatts. Okay. This means uh, on my on my on my inverter, I can select a power limit during braking of 27 kilowatts. Okay, so with this configuration, I would be able, for example, to stop a fan of, for example, 60 kilowatts. Okay, because uh, this means that during the, the stopping, I will uh, limit the braking power and I will um, keep that during this deceleration profile, the, the, the fan is only regenerating 27 kilowatts. So if I'm doing this during 60 seconds, for sure, I am able to stop at least a, a fan of, of 60 kilowatts, OK? OK, now let's move to the uh, external options. Um, as I explained before, um, as external options, we have the um, harmonic filter, the boosting reactor, and the charging resistor. Mm, we call those devices external options, but actually they are not options. They are mandatory. Okay, the ERHG cannot work without without uh, those components. Okay, and I'm explain why. Um, the first part is the, the harmonic filter. Okay, the harmonic filter is the is the is a part um, in charge of filtering the switching frequency of the ERHG. So as mentioned before, when we generate this initial wave. Um, with a THGI of uh, below five percent, I'm 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 switching IGBTs, yeah, and 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 these IGBTs, which is uh, the high frequency of ten kilohertz or sixteen kilohertz. Okay, this um, frequency, which is is inside the sinusoidal wave, is trans is transmitted into the mains, and this could um, this could damage some devices like uh, like power supplies which are connected into the same mains okay as we don't want to 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 generate problems on the mains we have to filter this this component this uh, 10 or 16 kilo switching frequency component and this is why we must install a harmonic filter in front of the RHG. then we have the boosting reactor boosting reactor is the one in charge of boosting the voltage in the input of the ERHG. So on the capacitors, we have a high voltage or a voltage higher than the mains, which will help the ERHG to manage the energy when, when driving and when braking. And then we have the, finally, we have the charging circuit. The charging circuit is the circuit in charge of uh, charging the capacitors on the inverter and the, on the ERHG. Um, of course, when we supply a, a capacitor from, from an empty capacitor, we have a Big peak of current, uh, which could damage uh, the capacitors and the, and the components in front of the capacitors. 
uh, for this, we must use a, a resistor. So the idea is that um, at the beginning of the charging, we supply the capacitors through the resistors. And when the capacitors are uh, charged or almost charged, we bypass those uh, resistors and we supply the ERG directly from, from the mains. OK, um, you can order to us uh, those components in two different configurations. One is uh, discrete components and the other one is uh, semi-assembled components. OK, let's start by semi-assembled components. So in this case, you see here a table. So for example, for RHC 5.5, we have two references. One, which uh, contains harmonic filter plus boosting reactors, and the other one, which contains charging resistor, OK? How this looks like? This looks like, like this, OK? Up to 55 kilowatts, we have a mounting plate, which contains the um, harmonic filter components, so the, the, the inductance, the resistor, the capacitors, and the boosting reactor. And on the capacity of 75, the bigger one, the inductance is placed outside because it's, it's, it's already a, a big inductance, and it's, it's um, complicated to have this in, in this mounting plate because then everything will be a bit too much heavy. OK, so we place the inductance outside. And then we have in another mounting plate the charging resistor. See, this would be the semi-assembled components. Um, in case of discrete components, uh, then we have a reference for each uh, component. So for the charging resistors, we have a, um, a reference. For the boosting reactor, we have another one. For, um, for the resistors, another one. So this means you have to order a component by component, and you then you can place the components in your cabinet upon your one. And of course, yeah, the components look like this. Inductances look like inductances, of course. <laughs> Capacitors are, are mounted in, in this uh, in this box, and the resistors. More uh, discrete components uh, for mode two. Remember, we will we will use a line reactor. Okay, in this case, again, remember that line reactor is is sized according to the motor or inverter power, and you can use the standard AC reactors uh, from Fuji Electric. And then we have the contactor for the charging circuit. Here you have the, as well, Fuji Electric references. But of course, you can use any other supplier because th those are, let's say, standard contactors, no, 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 speci no, no special characteristics. OK, now let, let me give you some uh, basic two tips for for the charging circuit in order to optimize the charging circuit okay when in your system because you want it like this you have a, a main contactor and the input of the system you can do this kind of wiring okay as you can see here the charging resistors are supplied from the input of the main contactor okay this makes that um when I first supply the cabinet, I have MC open and I have 73 closed. I charge the system by means of this, this uh, way, okay, through the charging resistor. So I, I supply the ERHC, I supply the inverter, I supply everything. And when the capacitors are, are charged, I close the contact, I open, sorry, the contactor 73 and I close the MC contactor, okay? which is the advantage of, of this kind of wiring. The advantage is that this contactor here, the 73 contactor is only used during the charging sequence. This means that this resistor, well, of course the resistor and the contactor has to be sized only for the charging energy, okay? Not for the power of the motor or the inverter or the RHC. Okay, so by doing this kind of wiring, we can downsize the capacity, the size, sorry, of, of the magnetic contactor. And then we have uh, another way of, of uh, doing this, this wiring, OK? Um, this is in order to optimize, again, the, the charging circuit. And if we do this kind of wiring, we can even um, remove the charging resistors, OK? Why we can do this? Because some inverters, um, due to the 
stronger charging circuit um, can supply, uh, let's say the charging circuit built in on the inverter can supply the capacitors on the inverter and the capacitors on the ERG. In other words, the charging circuit of the inverter is strong enough to supply the inverter and to supply the ERG. So on those inverter capacities, if we do this kind of wiring means um, first I supply the system by means of a contactor EMC, uh, contactor MC, which supplies the inverter and through the DC link supplies uh, the ERG. And then when the DC link is, 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 is charged, I open MC and I close 73. Then I have, a, 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 again, the standard system. Yeah. And uh, thanks to this wiring, as you can see, I avoid um, charging resistors because um, they are inside the inverter. And the MC contactor is sized, again, only by the charging uh, energy, no, not by the motor. OK? Um, what else? Yeah. Um, finally, the EMC filters. Well, in case of EMC filters, um, here you have the cross reference. We are going to use the family FN3258. But again, um, keep in mind this uh, cross reference is in case that uh, ERH is working as uh, active on then. But in case of mode two, the, this filter has to be sized according to the motor inverter power, not according to the ERH power. OK? And well, this was basically all. Let's uh, do a, a short summary of what, of what we have seen. So um, here in this webinar, we have introduced the Phrenic ERHC series. Um, we are going to use, or we recommend to use, or we encourage you to use this uh, device when we have these uh, two situations, when we have a system where we may, we can have a region energy. And remember that region energy can, can appear either when motor is working as, as, a, as a braking because of the mechanics characteristics, or when we want to stop a certain motor in a certain time. Yeah, in these cases, uh, we are going to have a region energy. And if we don't want to waste or burn this uh, energy in, in a braking resistor, then your, your chances, uh, your alternative is to use a, a ERHG. And second is when we want to reduce the harmonic distortion. When, when we want to have a harmonic distortion uh, THGI below 5%, then your product again is ERHG. Okay. Where, where to use um, this? It's plenty, uh, it's plenty of, of applications in the market, you see, where we can use uh, ERHG. So we can use it for waste, water treatment pumps, H. VAC applications, of course, elevators, escalators, overheat traveling cranes, parking garage, industrial mixers, and conveyors. And again, yeah, this is the product, ERHG, that uh, we will use nowadays uh, instead of RHEC. Okay. So uh, that was all of the presentation. I want to remember to you that um, our department, Fuji Electric European Technical Department, has an email. The email, you see it on your screen, technical.inverter at fujielectric-europe.com. Okay, if you have any technical question about uh, Fuji Electric products, either ERG or any other one, please send it to this email, or, and either me or any of my colleagues will answer you uh, as soon as possible.